All right, um, let's keep going with some of these arguments here or these principles that are applicable to driverless cars. And let's see if there continues to be problems with them. Is there any way that we can find a, a reasonable solution um, that makes everyone satisfied with having driverless cars on the road performing in ways that we find to be um, safe and ethical? So the next um, potential principle is called the passenger safety principle, and, th and that is that the car ought to protect its own passengers at all costs. Remember, in some of the previous principles, such as when we're just simply focused on minimizing the, the harm, that could result in the death of or the injury of you. So the passenger safety would remove that as from, from being an option. So the car is going to protect the driver at all costs. Now, imagine that the, that the, the five in the bridge case that we talked about before, where you're driving down the road, you're on the bridge, and there's five people in front of you, and the car's option is to either run off the bridge or run into the five people. What if I told you that the five, the, the five uh, passengers were all children? This car will plow into them rather than drive off of the bridge. Now, are you really comfortable knowing that in advance it has already been determined that given the choice between killing five children or yourself, you have chosen to kill the five children, right? That you are driving a car that is programmed to do that. What if it was 10 children? You know, what if it was an entire school um, or an entire school full of children? Would you be, you know, would you rest at night knowing that instead of you har uh, of harming yourself, you instead um, took out an entire school, right? Maybe, maybe you'd be okay with that, maybe not. Uh, the next principle is called the adjustable ethics setting, and perhaps in this one, the consumer ought to be given several choices regarding which moral framework their car will adopt. Now, the problem with this is that plausibly everyone will just select passenger safety at all costs, right? Go to the last one. So this option just reduces uh, to the previous idea, but this would be a nice way of for car manufacturers to absolve themselves of any blame, and this places all the responsibility solely on the customers. Now, we could pass regulations to set a maybe a moral floor. Arguably, some actions are more morally obligatory, while others are merely, merely super re re regulatory. Like, for instance, it would be a nice thing to do, but morally does not require. Now, for instance, perhaps you would be obligated to rescue a drowning child if there was no one else around but you are not obligated to send all your savings to charity to rescue starving children. The latter would be a nice thing to do, but you are under no moral obligation to do it. If this is right, perhaps the ethics setting could only be adjustable down to some moral minimum. But still, the question remains, what is the minimum? Um, what is the minimum that morality requires of you? Now, there's uh, many other things that we need to consider uh, when we talk about driverless cars and their ethics. Um, driverless cars may be susceptible to hacking. Uh, they will put people out of jobs like truckers and delivery people, taxis. They may result in fewer total cars. You'd simply call driverless Ubers when you want to go somewhere. Um, they might result in fewer kidney no donations due to fewer traffic fatalities. Um, and... Uh, MIT is crowdsourcing driverless car ethics, uh, so you can help out by taking that survey uh, that I put into your coursework. Anyways, I know this is a shorter um, and far more interesting, perhaps, um, and I feel this is a great way to end out our term. So I just want to thank everyone for your attention and working with, with us this term. Um, I hope these lectures were enjoyable and fascinating and gave you lots to talk about at the dinner table.